died in 1830, but prior to his death he prepared a revised version of the age-old conspiracy, the Illuminati, which under various aliases was to organize, finance, direct, and control all international organizations and groups by working their agents into executive positions at the top. In the United States, we have Woodrow Wilson, Franklin Roosevelt, Jack Kennedy, Johnson, Rusk, McNamara, Fulbright, etc., as prime examples. In addition, while Karl Marx was writing the Communist Manifesto under the direction of one group of Illuminists, Professor Karl Ritter of Frankfurt University was writing the antithesis under direction of another group. The idea was that those who direct the overall conspiracy could use the differences in those two so-called ideologies to enable them to divide larger and larger members of the human race into opposing camps so that they could be armed and then brainwashed into fighting and destroying each other and particularly to destroy all political and religious institutions. The work Ritter started was continued after his death and completed by the German so-called philosopher Friedrich Wilhelm Nietzsche, who founded Nietzscheism. This Nietzscheism was later developed into fascism and then into Nazism and was used to foment World Wars I and II. In 1834, the Italian revolutionary leader Giuseppe Mazzini was selected by the Illuminati to direct their revolutionary program throughout the world. He served in that capacity until he died in 1872. But some years before he died, Mazzini had enticed an American general named Albert Pike into the Illuminati. Pike was fascinated by the idea of a one-world government, and ultimately he became the head of this Luciferian conspiracy. Between 1859 and 1871, he, Pike, worked out a military blueprint for three world wars and various revolutions throughout the world, which he considered would forward the conspiracy to its final stage in the 20th century. Again, I remind that these conspirators were never concerned with immediate success. They always operated on a long-range view. Pike did most of his work in his home in Little Rock, Arkansas. But a few years later, when the Illuminati's lodges of the Grand Orient became suspect and repudiated because of Mazzini's revolutionary activities in Europe, Pike organized what he called the new and reformed Palladian Rite. He set up three supreme councils, one in Charleston, South Carolina, one in Rome, Italy, and the third in Berlin, Germany. He had Mazzini establish 23 subordinate councils in strategic locations throughout the world. These have been the secret headquarters of the world revolutionary movement ever since. Long before Marconi invented radio, the scientists in the Illuminati had found the means for Pike and the heads of his councils to communicate secretly. It was the discovery of that secret that enabled intelligence officers to understand how apparently unrelated incidents, one such as the assassination of an Austrian prince at Sarajevo, took place simultaneously throughout the world, which developed into a war or a revolution. Pike's plan was as simple as it has proved effective. It called for communism, Nazism, political Zionism, and other international movements be organized and used to foment three global world wars and at least two major revolutions. The first world war was to be fought so as to enable the Illuminati to destroy Tsarism in Russia, as vowed by Rothschild after the Tsar had torpedoed his scheme at the Congress in Vienna, and to transform Russia into a stronghold of atheistic communism. The differences stirred up by agents of the Illuminati between the British and German empires were to be used to foment this war. After the war would be ended, communism was to be built up and used to destroy other governments and weaken religions. World War II 
when and if necessary, was to be fomented by using the controversies between fascists and political Zionists. And here let it be noted that Hitler was financed by Krupp, the Warburgs, the Rothschilds, and other internationalist bankers, and that the slaughter of the supposed 600,000 Jews by Hitler didn't bother the Jewish internationalist bankers at all. That slaughter was necessary in order to create worldwide hatred of the German people and thus bring about the war against them. In short, this Second World War was to be fought to destroy Nazism and to increase the power of political Zionism so that the State of Israel could be established in Palestine. During this World War II, international communism was to be built up until it equaled in strength that of united Christendom. When it reached that point, it was to be contained and kept in check until required for the final social cataclysm. As we know now, Roosevelt, Churchill, and Stalin put that exact policy into effect, and Truman, Eisenhower, Kennedy, and Johnson continued that same exact policy. World War III is to be fomented by using the so-called controversies, the agents of the Illuminati, operating under whatever new name, are now stirring up between the political Zionists and the leaders of the Muslim world. That war is to be directed in such a manner that all of Islam and political Zionism, Israel, will destroy each other, while at the same time, the remaining nations, once more divided on this issue, will be forced to fight themselves into a state of complete exhaustion, physically, mentally, spiritually, and economically. Now, can any thinking person doubt that the intrigue now going on in the near, middle, and far east is designed to accomplish that satanic objective? Pike himself foretold all this in a statement he made to Mazzini on August 15, 1871. Pike stated that after World War III is ended, those who will inspire to undisputed world domination will provoke the greatest social cataclysm the world has ever known. Quoting his own words, taken from the letter he wrote to Mazzini, and which letter is now catalogued in the British Museum in London, England, he said, we shall unleash the nihilists and the atheists, and we shall provoke a great social cataclysm which in all its horror will show clearly to all nations the effect of absolute atheism, the origin of savagery and of most bloody turmoil. Then everywhere, the people forced to defend themselves against the world minority of revolutionaries will exterminate those destroyers of civilization and the multitudes disillusioned with Christianity, whose deistic spirits will be from that moment on without direction and leadership, and anxious for an ideal but without knowledge where to send its adoration, will receive the true light through the universal manifestation of the pure doctrine of Lucifer, brought finally out into public view, a manifestation which will result from a general reactionary movement which will follow the destruction of Christianity and atheism, both conquered and exterminated at the same time. When Mazzini died in 1872, Pike made another Italian revolutionary leader named Adrian Lemmy his successor. Lemmy, in turn, was succeeded by Lenin and Trotsky, then by Stalin. The revolutionary activities of all those men were financed by British, French, German and American international bankers, all of them dominated by the House of Rothschild. We are supposed to believe that the international bankers of today, like the money changers of Christ's day, are only the tools or agents of the great conspiracy, but actually they are the masterminds behind all of it. While the general public has been brainwashed by all the mass communications media into believing that communism is a movement of the so-called workers. The actual fact is that both British and American intelligence officers have authentic documentary evidence that international liberals 
operating through their international banking houses, particularly the House of Rothschild, have financed both sides in every war and revolution since 1776. Those who today comprise the conspiracy, the CFR in the United States, direct our governments, whom they hold in usury through such methods as the Federal Reserve System in America, to fight wars such as Vietnam, created by the United Nations, so as to further Pike's Illuminati plans to bring the world to that stage of the conspiracy when atheistic communism and the whole of Christianity can be forced into an all-out Third World War within each remaining nation as well as on an international scale. The headquarters of the great conspiracy in the late 1700s was in Frankfurt, Germany, where the House of Rothschild had been established by Mayor Anselm, who adopted the Rothschild name and linked together other international financiers who had literally sold their souls to the devil. After the Bavarian government's exposure in 1786, the conspirators moved their headquarters to Switzerland, then to London. Since World War II, after Jacob Schiff, the Rothschild's boy in America, died, the headquarters of the American branch has been in the Harold Pratt Building, New York, and the Rockefellers, originally protégés of Schiff, have taken over the manipulation of finances in America for the Illuminati. In the final phases of the conspiracy, the one world government will consist of the king dictator, head of the United Nations, the CFR, and a few billionaires, economists, and scientists who have proved their devotion to the great conspiracy. All others, are to be integrated into a vast conglomeration of mongrelized humanity, actually slaves. Now let me show you how our federal government and the American people have been sucked into the one world takeover plot of the Illuminati great conspiracy. And always bear in mind that the United Nations was created to become the housing for that one world so-called liberal conspiracy. The real foundations of the plot for the takeover of the United States were laid during the period of our Civil War. Not that Weishaupt and the earlier masterminds had ever overlooked the New World. As I have previously indicated, Weishaupt had his agents planted over here as far back as the Revolutionary War. But George Washington was more than a match for them. It was during the Civil War that the conspirators launched their first concrete efforts. We know that Judah Benjamin, chief advisor of Jefferson Davis, was a Rothschild agent. We also know that there were Rothschild agents planted in Abraham Lincoln's cabinet who tried to sell him into a financial dealing with the House of Rothschild. But old Abe saw through the scheme and bluntly rejected it, thereby incurring the undying enmity of the Rothschilds, exactly as the Russian Tsar did when he torpedoed their first League of Nations at the Congress in Vienna. Investigation of the assassination of Lincoln revealed that the assassin, Booth, was a member of a secret conspiratorial group. Because there were a number of highly important government officials involved, the name of the group was never revealed and it became a mystery, exactly as the assassination of Jack Kennedy still is a mystery. But I am sure it will not for long remain a mystery. Anyway, the ending of the Civil War destroyed, temporarily, all chances of the House of Rothschild to get a clutch on our money system, such as they had acquired in Britain and other nations in Europe. I say temporarily because the Rothschilds and the masterminds of the conspiracy never quit. So they had to start from scratch but they lost no time in getting started. Shortly after the Civil War, 